Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm with Kirsten Lewis, who is a photographer who's now based in Colorado, but originally from Connecticut, where I live. Uh, and she's a photographer who photographs families and documents families. Um, she's phenomenal. She's a, a huge hit as a teacher on Creative Live, and she's going to be at Inspire Photo Retreats in February 2016. Uh, I'm I'm so honored to speak with you, Kirsten, because number one, I see you and I look to you as a teacher more than <laughs> anything else. And I know we both have a, have a well, in, in the future at least, we have a few sessions still to go where you're still going to coach me and mentor me. Uh, welcome to this quick little interview for Inspire Photo Retreats. I know you're going to be teaching there. Uh, people are interested in knowing who you are and what you're going to be teaching us. So yeah. welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here and introduce myself. I think there, I, I know some people know me, but not everyone. So right. I mean, I think uh, you know uh, the, the you, you you were at one point a, a prolific wedding photographer. You you still are interested in weddings to a point, uh, but you are your focus has shifted f from weddings to fo family photography. Tell us a little bit about perhaps why that shift came about? What was so compelling for you to move from weddings to family uh, portraiture? Um, I think the more I studied uh, pure photojournalism and uh, familiarized myself with that, that genre and the, the greatest of greats, Eddie Adams and um, uh, Bresson and um, even David Allen Harvey and um, I found that I wasn't fulfilled in the weddings because a lot of the moments although they're honest and genuine they're also very predictable and the one thing I loved when I photographed families is that it, there was nothing that I could predict other than there could be definitely a meltdown at some point during the day and that's it. Like that's the only thing that I can prepare for when I when I'm with families, and that I liked. It kept me and keeps me uh, working hard and constantly pushed and challenged and inspired. It also connects back to uh, I have a degree in child psych, and I was an elementary school teacher. So I found myself once I left the classroom, I was really missing kids on a regular basis. So it seemed like a natural transition, although I was basically going into a genre that at least wasn't recognized. It was being done, but the idea to spend a whole day with a family and just photograph their life, like a few years ago, that wasn't really talked about. And so it was scary because I was doing something that no one else was doing. And so it took a little bit of time, but um, I really love it. It just artistically fulfills me. I was just speaking with we the other day and I said, we we're talking about the wedding industry. And I just said, I found myself artistically free now doing what I do and focusing on family photography versus all the expectations in the industry with, with weddings. You may want to tell us who we is because I know oh, who we sorry. is, but I, my, my audience may not know who we is. Go ahead. Um, we has been an important person in in my my growth. Uh, he's the founder of the Foundation Workshops, and now Fearless, um, which he likes to include me in, even though I don't really shoot weddings anymore. So I feel very grateful, and he trusted me enough to be one of the only female team leaders the past couple of years at Foundation. Um, there's only a few of us that have done it, and it's been um, a real privilege to do so. So. I still look to we a lot for guidance. Um, he's kind of like a guru and go. also has kind of left the wedding industry. He's very much submersed in it, but he doesn't shoot as much anymore. Um, he's a great teacher and um, he's just a good mentor to have. So phenomenal. Yeah, I've had yeah. the pleasure of uh, uh, learning again you know, under him and um, he's been fantastic. I know he, the foundation workshops are the, the, the place to go to, to learn the sort of the, the, the raw skills of being a, a documentary photographer. Yeah. Um, so it's great. Uh, tell us a little bit about your presentation at Inspire. What can we expect uh, from you at Inspire this year? 
So I decided because I know there's a lot of wedding photographers that go to Inspire. That's right. I I didn't want to box anyone out by just speaking about family photography. So I believe the title of my talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm six months pregnant, and it placenta brain is real. So um, uh, I believe it's the being of you is what I titled it. And the one thing that I've been doing and working with my students a lot is something that happened in my transition from going to wedding photography to family photography, family photojournalism, is that I learned that the best photojournalists are the ones that you can see themselves in their work. Even though they're documenting other people's lives, lives you see them, and there's a consistency in their work, um, no matter who it is, you can identify with, you can almost see who they are mm -hmm. with how they photograph other people. Sure how they connect with them. And so my talk is going to be about encouraging all photographers. It doesn't matter if you're family or wedding uh, or even, even like portrait photographers like Luis Garbon, he is brilliant and he has done this in the studio, is being vulnerable enough and really identifying with who you are as an artist by coming in terms with who you are as a human being, how that can really... Um, change the way that you shoot. It can strengthen your work. It can, it, it can create a visual imprint on all of the stuff you do so people can recognize your work and that's what sets you apart, not how much off-camera lighting you know or the best poses. At the end of the day, it really is about can viewers identify something individual in your work and that's you as the artist. If you're, if you're a photographer who at the heart of it is an artist, if you're at the heart of it a business person, you've learned photography, it probably won't apply as well. But I think that most people that go to inspire these kinds of conferences, they're truly artists at the heart of it. So uh, are you referring to style? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, and I hate that word style. I know, I was, I was going to say, <laughs> that's, that's like a, you know, a, a dangerous word to use, yeah. right? I like to, I like to refer to it as your photographic perspective and that everybody has their own photogra photographic perspective. Style is almost too much of a commitment to box yourself in, in my opinion. I guess if they were to describe my style, it's documentary photography, right? No matter what I do, I'm, I'm documenting people's lives. And a um, photojournalist in the past, I was just reading an article about this, photojournalists in the past have... Um, their job was to get one story in one photo, right? And so they go on like a full day assignment or a week or a month, and they need to come back with just a couple of photos that represent their whole work. And that's shifting a little. And photojournalists are now taking on longer personal projects or longer projects that take a year where they're developing books and stuff. Documentary photographers in the past have been more like what I'm doing, which is to tell a story of a particular subject in a sequence of photos. Um, but I still identify with being a family photojournalist. Um, very pure, um, not in any way projecting what I want to happen into my subjects, just connecting, becoming a part of the family and, and watching how they, they experience their life and documenting that. But there's still a part of me in the photos that I make. So I'm going to talk about that. Oh, how I did that. wonderful wonderful that I mean that that's uh, yet and again another another presentation that I must sit through because it, it sounds like exactly what I would love to do um, for my own business uh, for my own art for my own soul really um, when it comes to when it comes to making this great shift that you've done from weddings to family portraits to family document. It's not really portraits, really. They're, they're do you're documenting life, right? Yes. Um, you don't pose anybody. You don't say anything really other than I'm going to sit here and watch the entire family, right, as you go through, your mo through the motions of the day. Well, right? I say I'm going to become a part of your family for the day. So there's lots of talking. Like I... I just hang out with them for the day. I laugh with them. I'm making jokes. I'm responding to things that are happening. If a kid has a temper tantrum, it's very likely you're going to hear me say, oh, that's nice. Like, I, <laughs> I respond to that. 
Um, it's also to let the parents know, like, this is totally normal and typical. And it doesn't phase me at all. I'm not judging. Like, all kids have, all kids, like, become crazy people at some point during the day. And I love it. As a father um, of two, I will <laughs> assure you that happens. Yes. <laughs> Well, you're looking at them and you're like, really? Are you, yeah. are you really doing I do that, that a lot. I'm like, what? What, what was that all about? Um, <laughs> that happens a lot. You're right, Kirsten. Um, so, so, okay. So you have your own approach, perspective yes. to making wonderful documentary family portraits. Um, so this question uh, is probably beyond the scope of the actual interview, but I have to ask you this. And I think I've asked you this before. You've suggested to me uh, the one way to convince more people to sign on to do this kind of work is to simply f go out and photograph, perhaps for free, spend a couple of days, a couple of different families, photograph them, bring back the photographs and showing people, okay, this is the kind of photographs I'm going to make for you. I'm st we just talked about kids having temper tantrums, and I know you photographed the meltdown. You know, you've, you've made those images uh, for parents and maybe for yourself first, but for parents. And when you give these photographs, these portraits, these moments uh, that are sheer terror for the kid, actually, uh, to the parents, are they going, oh, this is Johnny. I love pictures of Johnny having a meltdown because, you know, in 20 years time, it's going to be precious to him or me or who? I mean, who is this for, really, you know? So it's a long-winded question, but I'm just curious as to know who who are you making these photographs for? Are they for the mom, dad, the kid, or, I t or for you? Well, they're for me too because yeah. in a way it's like a personal project for me, right? Of course. And I'm working on two books now, photo books, that are projects or case studies or photographic collections of particular things I see in families. I tell my clients, I tell my students that these photos are really for the kids. It's a gift that you're investing in for your children when they're older because so my mom was a photographer all growing up and there's very few photos of me with my mom. There's great photos of me. They're all pretty much documentary like moment photos, but the ones I treasure the most are with me and my mom because there's very few of them. So in this, I'll talk about this. This is like a really long, I know I'm, we need to cut it short, but you never know when someone's going to pass away. And that's why photography, I think, and video, but really still photos are so important because it's the only way that we can visually um, like keep keep our loved ones in some way in our lives visually after they're gone. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And especially for kids, like my parents are going to go eventually soon. And my grandmother is on, like she's on her way out and I have this baby coming. And like one thing that was important to me is that when I went to go visit my more, more, who's my favorite person, anybody that follows me, I talk about her a lot. She's on her way out and I don't think she's going to meet my kid but I made sure that my husband photographed me in a documentary way pregnant with her so that when my baby comes, when they're older, I can say, well, you did kind of meet your great grandmother. Okay. Not, not really, but you did. And the same thing applies for these families with these kids. Like when they're older, their parents might be gone by then or they just need they're in the middle of working a nine to five job. They're, they're busy, like dealing with their own families and they need a sense of just, um, a, an emotional break. And by revisiting photos that they can say, I don't remember that house. My God, my mom always used to look at me that way. I think sometimes the way that we can find grounding as human being beings, when we're overwhelmed being adults, is to revisit occasionally our childhood, happy parts of our childhood, because that was a foundation for who we became as adults. And so, like, that's a really psychological. <laughs> I have a psych degree, so, but ultimately, it's for the kids when they're adults, and also to share with their kids. 
Um, but this is what life was like. It's a reminder that you were a child and like you didn't have to worry about bills and you played outside with your friends and you had temper tantrums. And it's a way for you to identify with your own children one day like, oh, I was just like them. Um, I'm parenting just like my parents did. So it's that visual like keepsake for them. How do you how do you message that to parents? How do you message all of that, what you've just said to parents so that not only are they visually seeing, okay, well, that family had this wonderful documentary documentary session with you for the entire day. And I, I love the idea that you have, a, you've created a book for them or whatever. Uh, what is it that you tell them when you meet them and say, this is what I'd like to do for you? Like, I'm lucky that they come to me because they want, I'm known for doing this now, so I don't have to do a lot of convincing. Right. But as I I will tell anybody interested in this, um, as I tell all my students, a little like inside information, you can't convince anyone to do this. Convincing is not how you're going to become successful. How I convince people is by showing them my photos. And if you have a strong collection of photos and you can show them a slideshow and they can connect and emotionally respond to it, they are going to want that for their families. Because this is a newer genre, this is a newer approach to family photography, um, as far as SEO goes or getting the word out there, people need to see the work to want it. So taking advantage of Instagram, taking advantage of Facebook, taking advantage of when you're doing SEO, do not box yourself into documentary family photography in Connecticut. You just want to say family photography in Connecticut. So when people are searching for family photographers, your work is going to stand out amongst everyone else. And it's going to make them stop for, you know, I think the, you want someone to stop for longer than 11 seconds on a website. Uh, the, The, the average stop time is 11 seconds and then they'll move on or they'll decide to investigate further. If you have really strong photos, that stand apart from everyone else, you will more than likely make that sale. Awesome. awesome. And you can and you can do this in one hour, two hours, four hours. You don't have to do like a 24-hour coverage that I do. Um, it's just a matter about making good photos. Well, uh, with that, Kirsten, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you at Inspire Photo Retreats. Uh, it's going to be a phenomenal conference. Uh, I don't know if you've been to one before, uh, but it's it's quite the experience, and it's one that I always look forward to every year, year after year. It's a wonderful community of photographers who are just chilling out, having a good time, learning from people like you, uh, and uh, really, in, I mean, to, to, to use a cliched expression, being inspired to do better work throughout the year. You know, I think that's the whole point of meeting early on in the year. Um, we'll see you then. Talk yeah. to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.